How many of you have been following uh, this thing here, this uh, um, the Rush thing? Now, I've been following it. I've got many hours underneath my belt, and I could have made many videos of this, dragging it out, but I, I just want the, the details, and the details that matter. L l let me just discuss a few of them. One of them is the autopsy lady, a head autopsy lady. She stated that um, they did not intubate the, the lady first, the one that got shot. Now, I have to tell you, intubation, they, they intubated her, she said they, that she, they didn't, uh, I'll find it for you and put another video, not in this one, that they didn't intubate the person, um, uh, well, they, they, they put it, they, they, they intubated the person, but they got it into the person's, uh, instead of airway, they got it into their stomach, esophagus, so that's not intubation. So she's lying when she says they intubated her, well, you didn't do it. It's like saying, I, I, you know, we gave him an IV, but you stuck it into his damn, uh, his fat. You never put it into his uh, a vein. So you didn't give him an IV. You stuck a needle in him. Now, here's a kicker. They would not fly her until she was stabilized. So did you realize, guys, that she was able to talk? You know, and, and also this, this autopsy lady states that, uh, the head autopsy lady for that area, she states that, uh, um, that she died of a the gunshot wound because of uh, the lung. And usually you don't die, you know, a lung shot doesn't kill you. It can, but it, it's not the, she also was shot in the spine. You know, the bleeding and all that can it happens. But they had an hour and a half um, before they, uh, they, they took her out of there, at, from there, trying to stabilize her. They couldn't stabilize her because they couldn't get oxygenated blood there. And they also tried to give her a plasma in the, in the heart, which is amazing, right? That turns out that was that came up short also. They didn't make that. But nevertheless, they're supposed to theoretically only have stabilized her before putting on her helicopter. The helicopter takes her to the hospital. The hospital basically works on her. And guess what they do at the hospital? They attempt to intubate her because they found out that the medics at the, uh, you know, the fire department medics did not um, intubator correctly. They had the airway down the, in, in the uh, air down to the esophagus, the stomach, basically, is where it's going. And lo and behold, the, uh, the, uh, the autopsy reveals that they had a re-intubator at the hospital, which should be great news, except for the problem is they also, at the hospital, intubated her. Well, they gave airway to her stomach again, not to her lungs. So she dies. Now, who's at fault there? The medics, I think they fall under uh, um, um, the uh, Good Samaritan guidelines, trying your best in the field. But the hospital doesn't get that coverage. But the, the autopsy lady didn't say that that was a contributing factor to the death, not giving this lady uh, air, giving her an airway, giving her oxygenate, oxygenated blood, giving her oxygen to her blood. At one point, they say, uh, the, the lady keep the one... Uh, EMT there, it keeps identifying herself as a medic, which is wrong, says she tried to put oxygen, give her oxygen a mask over her face, and she was combative. Combative usually means you have a head injury, or you're, uh, you're not giving enough oxygen for what the person wants when they're trying to breathe. And so he puts a mask on there, and it's just not enough. You turn it up a bit. Worst case, you're giving brain damage, too much oxygen. But, yeah, you try. <clears throat> So she probably didn't have the oxygen percentage turned up enough for the lady to, uh, to be able to feel comfortable getting this oxygen. She also didn't tell her, look, this is what you need right now. You're losing blood. You need this, 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 this higher quality of oxygen than the dusty air around us. You need this. So suffer for me and let me turn it up and let me go from there. And then you can also call the hospital and ask them, hey, you, you mind if I turn the percentage up? Can I do this? Because she's combative otherwise. And they might say, yeah, yeah, for the time limit, yes. For that amount of time, yeah, give her the extra oxygen. Uh, you know, the more, more pure, more, higher percentage of oxygen. So the, uh, um, and besides that, she's losing blood, so that it would be help super oxygenate her blood, if you will. Now, Alec Baldwin, we know in many interviews, he said he never touched the trigger, never touched the trigger, never touched the trigger. I'm going to show you clearly. He puts his, he's got his hand on the trigger, but hold on, I know we may not like Alec Baldwin, but I'm the most fair judge you would ever know, because he's, this is one, two, three, this is around the fourth take, they're trying to get it, get it right, but he asked, and there's a director in there, 
hey, pull it out, pull it out all the way. So initially, the prosecutor's here saying he was only supposed to reveal part of the gun, right about, let's go here, let me just, so I'll come back to 1803. Listen to this. And play. It was just to reveal uh, that part of, you know, the part of the gun that holds the bullets um, coming out of the holster. And then that portion of the, you know, that piece of photography was finished. All right, so it's just to reveal that, as he states, right? Once we saw that gun coming out of the holster, it would again give the audience... So that's it. They were supposed to stop there. So you say, oh, we got him now. He should have never came any further. But I'm going to show you here, there's a director in the room. The director gives further instructions at this point. Let's go with this. You know, the, you know the director, he's allowed to say, and he's going to ask for clarity. We pull it out, pull it out all the way, and it's going to happen that way. Again, you may not act like Alec Baldwin, but if you're going, my whole thing, guys, is I, I, I'm not biased. I, if I'm biased, I'll tell you my bias. I don't like Alec Baldwin because he attacks, you know, who, you know, the, at the time, a lot of our position about, you know, who he wanted. He, tack, he was attacking Orange Man for fun, but it was his living. But then after his living, he also attacks people on the street and stuff like that. So personally wise, no. I liked him as a young character. I played a couple of good movies. Um, but the rest, no. But let, let, let's, it's, it's going to take about a minute, but you're going to see him get into character a couple of times here. Uh, this is the viewpoint they're shooting from. And the gun's here, but... I'm going to show you something in the moment that will uh, res resolve that. All right, let, let's, let me back up a little bit. So the, the this guy states that he that the, the uh, he heard the the armorer give the gun to the director, stating that it's a, that um, it was in the safe beforehand uh, before we went to lunch. And I grabbed the gun from the safe, uh, no, it was secured. And I grabbed the gun from the safe, and I'm bringing it to you now. Never them checking the bullets. Uh, the, the guy didn't observe that. That's what he heard. Um, and then he he called that cold gun, which means you know no no uh, no no half rounds, no quarter rounds, no full rounds, no bullets. Well, there were supposed to be no bullets on the set. Now they had, did have some practicing to teach him how a gun really jerks and works and stuff like that. But these bullets somehow mag magically wound up on this set instead of not. Now. She's also been known, this this, uh, this Kateris lady, she's looking young and pretty here, the halo effect. Remember, the halo effect makes you think that, wow, you know, what? What? she's pretty, she's young, it can't be her, right? Well, if you find her pictures previously, she's a skunk. Let's call people skunks. She's got the hair, skunk got multicolor hair. She's got the red hair, the blue hair, this, all this stuff. I've seen the interview with her, so I'm totally biased against her, and... There's a lady that, that they call the mom for the shit for the shooting sets that the set that, that, that will get you coffee, whatever, and a mom. So at one point after this incident took place, as I understand it, uh, they were at the hotel still and someone called uh, that would got hold of the mom uh, floor down, f rooms over, whatever it may be. And the hotel and said, look, can you go walk, keep out on her? You know, just why I would go to the store and get some. Go to the store and grab some something, some something, whatever it was, you know. So mom, mom says yes, I'll do that. In, in there with the whatever the, the armor is, the, the girl. She states that uh, you know the, the girl says we hold something for me, and the mom says sure I will, and she gives her a baggie, and inside that baggie is a clear bag. And inside that clear bag is another clear bag, a uh, colored bag like you would do for coke. And the, the further questioner, not not in this interview, but another another uh, thing, and they, she states, "Well, how do you? What what makes you? Well, she said, what do you think it was?'" She said, "I think it, I think it was coke." Why? Well, why can you say that? Well, because I used I'm a recovering addict, and you know you think in a few years, no, it's it's thirty years she's got it under her belt, and she's seen coke since then too, because they they prosecuted the public uh, the the defender tried to pretend like, hey, when's the last time you seen coke? She said, "No, I've seen it many times before then." So once she gave it to her in her hand, instead of saying, no, I won't hold this for you, she took it. She said she left the room uh, and threw it in the trash down the hall. But the public, uh, her, de her, def her uh, defense attorney then asked, hey, so you walked out there and you threw it in the hall in the trash. Yes, I did. Why would you do that? You know, they both asked, well, because it's, it's, it's drugs and I can't, can't, you know, be around this drug stuff. He says, well, well, two cops walking towards you at the time. And instead of her saying two cops, she said, well, two, two men in uniforms. So, you know, they don't have any fake cops on the set. So you can probably, maybe there were two cops there. 
especially after the shooting, to go, you know, monitor the hotel and see who's leaving or not. You know, see who wants to make a run for it, just for the sport of it. So, uh, you know, show their presence there while they know this cast is there. And um, and they're still trying to get, to, you know, they don't know what's going on. So there's just, you know, just the rough feathers a bit. And uh, my guess is that she saw those cops and in uniform and she said, oh, shit, she's probably going to hold it for the Hannah, Helena, uh, whatever, the, uh, the uh, I mean, the, uh, hold it for the uh, the girl. And when she saw them cops, she dumped that shit, she dumped the stash. Later on, the uh, girl came to her and said, uh, the armorer, if you will, and armorers are unlicensed, it turns out. There's no license for it. It's just, you know, hey, how good are you with the guns? You, you, get, into, you get the job through nepotism. Her father was an armorer. Is so then she shares the uh she says later she comes to you, you got me got my stuff at with an app plural uh plural not singular and we never get to the bottom of that um so now i want you to see this scene and i'm going to freeze it in a moment so this is this is a dry he says in it ready in action that's the, the guy in the back is supposed to be a uh a sheriff or whatever marshall's saying Harlem rush you know put, put you know release you know Give up your arms and, and keep still. Couple, and he's going to take two, three takes. And this is the camera view. And you're going to see his face as he looks into the camera. Oh, okay. Can you just stand up nice and slow? Drop any weapons you have. Again, ready? He says again, ready. He wasn't. He doesn't think he, he got that right. So take take again. He wasn't ready. Now, here we go. I'm going to give away something here so you know what you're looking for. The hammer is pulled back on the gun, and he has his finger on the trigger. Not outside, like he said, etc. But they get in the character. He didn't know. So he didn't lie when he said he didn't have his finger on the trigger and all that. Dude just didn't know. All right? He didn't know. You're going to see this gun could have gone off once, two times. They're going to pull it with his finger on the trigger, the guard back, uh, the hammer back, his finger on the trigger. He just doesn't know. He said, I never had my finger in the trigger. Yeah, yeah, he did, especially for this angle. Especially for this angle, because you'd see it. So it was an edited, it was... Okay. Action, he said. Yeah. Arlen Russ. Arlen Russ. Did you get up nice and slow? Did you just get up nice and slow? Drop any weapons you have. One more. He says, calls for one more. He says, you good? You know, the, he, the, in other words, he's got to pull a gun out. And he's just not, you know, he's trying to get the facial expression, I think. And here we go. He says, ready, meaning you're going to do it in a second. Now watch for the clarity. All in rush. All in rush. Rust. Did you get up nice and slow, drop any weapons you have? Drop any weapons you have. He's how close we get right there. He was, he's pretty close. He's within two feet. So the only way to keep that line till he lands, till camera lands. Yeah. So camera lands, you know, get it out of the fucking way. Yep. Now he tells him, draw your gun and look up completely. He says, draw your gun and look up completely. Listen, guys, pay attention. The director now. I'm going to turn it up. I turned it up. On this one, draw your gun and look up. I'm going to back it up again. 816 about. We'll go to 814. On this one, I want you to draw your gun and look up. Yep. And point your gun. And point your gun. And he says, which way? Camera right or camera left? And he's going to get a very good clarity on it. Watch. So camera left for you. I'll stand right here for you. So camera left for you. So that means pull a gun. Here's the cameraman. We're at the camera now, right? So he's going to do camera left. So he's going to pull a gun on this side. Hutchins is on that side. So he's just he's, he's got clarity on that. So now it's the new thing. The director is telling him a new. Uh, this is the new scene. Not just a bullet by your waist. He tells, and you're going to tell him to fully draw it. Listen. Yep. And point your gun. Okay, which way? Camera right or left? So camera left for you. I'll stand right here for so, you. So whip it out. 
Yeah. Okay, well, let me get this all greased and ready. Really so whip it out, see? Okay, ready? And there we go. You see the hammer? That's the hammer right there. Let me see if I can get you a better shot. There's the hammer. It is, uh, I don't know if this is going to go good, the wrong way. We're going to go this. There's the hammer. It's pulled back. Um, damn it, guys. Sorry. Uh, this part of the screen is being cut off by there. But the hammer is fully exposed. When you see that little point, that's the, ha that's the, the, the cocked hammer. Now, there's, there's a half cock. I don't know if this gun has a half cock. Now, here's the kicker. These, so these are supposed to all be fake bullets, and they've really been dusted up, make it look fake. They can be wood and everything else. But the um, he had two guns like this for the set. Nevertheless, there were supposed to be no guns with uh, with um, um, live rounds in it. But his gun that he liked for this, because he got comfortable with it, it actually on the bottom, someone identified it, had something on the bottom, like a star or something like that. So it was real identifiable for him. Um, yeah, he made some misfires out there in the field, some extra acting, if you will, some ad-libbing, um, which is, you know, safe. Um, I, I don't, I don't care what they say. When he, when he fired it, it looks like he was fired. The, the the cloud of smoke looked like it was going off to his right, not towards people. Um, so they said, oh, well, he's just taking extra shots when they when they called stop. He did, but I looked over and over that, and I, and that 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 cloud of smoke was up to the right so he was doing it for effect but not for uh not to shoot downwind quarter uh, uh blanks and blanks have a bl uh, quarter quarter rounds half rounds you know the, the powder can can come towards you and also whatever may be lodged in there is, is charged in that little uh cylinder and when i say cylinder i mean the barrel but i want you to notice that's the full hammer exposed there so let's do this let's go um Look at the gun right there as best I can do for you. That's a fully exposed hammer. I'm going to move it out of the way. That's a fully exposed hammer. Now he's driving it in and, in and out of his belly. In and out with his finger on the hammer. Now if he really thought he had a fucking live bullet in there, meaning he did it for whatever reason, it's a good chance he would shoot himself right now in the side or something like that. He really believed it was what they call the cold gun, meaning nothing there. He's stroking that gun in and out. All right, he's stroking it in and out of that holster. All right, he wants it to come out nice and easy. His hand's in the way. There we go, right about there. There's a full hammer exposed. All right, normally you would you, you see this much of it. There's the full hammer. It's cocked. His finger is on the trigger right here, inside the trigger guard. And on the tr on the trigger, ready to just release. There's a lot less pressure. There we go, coming up a bit, and there we go. More finger action, if you will. And his finger is inside. That's wrapped around, not pointing outside. Inside, his hands around there is cocked. This was so it was going to be the scene where he just pulls it out about that much. But now they told him to pull it out and and draw. Now we were supposed to cut from this scene where he pulls it out a bit. Stop, just pull out a little bit, stop, and then they start from the next scene. Was the, the cameras are going to set up behind him, and he would be shooting at that person, telling him to stop doing a gun. But as you heard, the director said, Now I want you to pull it all the way out, and I want you to point the gun. Now it's not going to go off this time, guys, but I want you to see. He covers it, he's making sure it's not being going to get caught on the jacket. That's what that's about. So he's trying to make sure it can pull out. You can't see it's already partially out of the out of the holster already, so that's part of the 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 uh, the, uh, the setup. So you know, if it was fully in the holster, it might be causing a little problem to pull out and do and make it look like a quick draw. So what, what do you do? You hide most of the holster and you have most of the gun out. So you are able to hear maybe hear a little leather, but you go from there. Now let's play. I'm gonna start it one more time for you. I don't know. All in rush. Rust. He's going to do it this time. See his fingers on the thumb? On the <coughs> okay. There it is. Fingers on the inside the guard. And this is where they're supposed to stop. He doesn't know it. There's a real fucking bullet in there. Helena Hutchinson is in the pathway. Not now. He's probably pointing at the guy at the door. He could have been shot. But during that sweeping action... When he pulls on it, his hand, his finger inadvertently squeezes the trigger, 
and she's down here where we are possibly on our angle to uh, camera left or uh, video to the left below his left arm down a bit i believe the bullet went through this part of her shoulder and then exited her uh her it, it lacerated her lung one way or another we don't know clearly because the mri they didn't present uh, from the from the autopsy and then it clipped her spine so um so she had trouble breathing now here we go okay let's see look now he swept other people see if the if the girl was there she'd say stop sweeping motherfucker sweeping i meaning you got to load it you got you got to assume the gun's loaded and he just went past everybody else including sweeping his own hand putting hand in front of the barrel but he thinks it's a prop at this point he doesn't know it's a fucking bullet in there but you assume it's one in there and he should have put it back around this way and point it towards him towards the holster and in it goes um they have they would have dummy bullets in there and she is not present she's outside the church the armor is so she can't call a safety violation on this but it turns out the ad can this uh, uh the uh um assistant director so let's back that up a bit let's 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 see how that, that discipline i'm talking about look at a sweep everybody all the people to their left and right finger still in the guard finger is still inside the trigger the hammer's there, he's looking at it, he's in character, sweeping all his people. He had no gun discipline. No gun discipline. He grabs it, there's the hammer. No big deal. And he's going to replace it in there. I'm going to back it up. He says, let me get ready again. Now this time he's going to get the direction to pull it. Look at that now it's no longer pointing the other direction now it's pointing this way but it's high it's pointing high like a guy would be there but at one point it sweeps low to go to high and that's when she gets it not now it's not in this shot so he goes wide he pulls it out let's see he's holding with his trigger oh so part of it too is your anatomy trying to swing that hand that way your finger your finger might cramp up and pull a pull tighter it doesn't take much to pull the trigger hammer this time there we go they're sweeping everybody cameraman's being swept meaning the gun can sweeping him hands inside the guard and he just draws down the guy and he stops see the finger inside the guard inside there and the hammer's pulled back guys that was never decocked meaning putting putting the hammer back putting there's a hammer right there never putting the hammer back all right. Well, remember they're going th authentic. They don't. They they know people like myself would know whether guns, hammers, forward or not. And now he swings over to the guy. So he overswang, swung, and his hands kind of loose on the on the gun. It's kind of loose here. It's not tight. It's it's loose. That daylight there. Let's see. Maybe the gun's a little too small for him. I'm gonna I'm gonna stage it up. And they're all worried about, okay, now he looks in deck, take the gun, okay. He, and the scene's over with. Okay, let's see, and we'll go back and see what he says. Nice. He said nice. So that this, the, 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 that's, the director was happy with it. Okay, then let's go back and let's do it again from 18, let's, let's watch this multiple takes. From 1859, the, the timestamp, 1759. Uh, YouTube channel. Well, how close can I get right there? How close can I get right there? Yes, that's the camera. On this one, draw your gun and look up. Okay, which way? Camera right or left? So camera left for you. Oh, it's his hand. I just saw the hand. So he pointed. He made it very clear where he wanted it. Watch his hand come by. I didn't see it before. So he says, which way? Camera right or camera left? So for clarity, he says this way. There's the hand. That's the, uh, that's the assistant director. So camera left for you. I'll stand right here for you. So, so whip it out. Yeah. Okay, well, let me get... See? So whip it out. He's saying he made it very clear. I mean, you can't fucking argue that. 
So whip it out. No more than what this guy's narrative. He's supposed to just hold it by the waist. All right, that's what the prosecutor's stating. But not, but not, he's, but not there. But it was re-edited to well, the, uh, 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 the director to state, the assistant director to state, do such. Hutchinson's in there too. Now the other problem is Hutchinson's is a Ukraine Russian speaking lady. And the the camera person uh, that the, the one of the camera persons one of the uh, no um, gaffers one of the uh, assistants there also speaks Russian Ukraine and they were having private conversations with that no one else could understand because they're speaking Ooh, Russian Ukraine. On this one, draw, draw you're gonna look up. Camera right or left? So camera left for you. I'll stand right here. So, so whip it out. Yeah. Okay, well, let me get this all greased. Ready? Okay, ready? See. Okay, ready? 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 There, but his fingers inside the trigger. But who's gonna want to see? You know, he's got to put it inside the trigger. Put it out there. But he's gonna say, "Oh, he couldn't pull down on that guy. He'd have to pull, still put his finger on the trigger." But him having a hammer on it, cocked and ready, and resting there because he's just been injured or shot—that makes sense for a movie line. Okay, ready, ready. That's it. They get the drop on anybody to try to get the drop on him. So he'd be ready like that. Harlan Rose. Harlan Rose. <laughs> so he asked for another one. He asked for another one. Then he got greedy for another one. And the one we don't see is the shooting one. Harlan Rose. That put him in the character with that voice. Okay, so he's, his thumb, I watched him use a thumb like he's almost pretending like he's cocking it. Watch his thumb, his right thumb, of course. He rolls it around like it comes across, like he's, like he's pretending like he cocked it. See his thumb going up, and so there's his thumb. See his thumb is high. So right there, so it's pretend, it's a fake cock, but he knows it's, Okay, so the, I was able to see that, and he could probably edit that note that when filming. And then it looks like he cocked. And anybody doing any stage f f freeze framing like I'm doing would, or w wouldn't be able to catch anything wrong. Except for he's pointing that gun off to the right. He's overswept his victim. And he's coming back to align with his victim. Um, and now he's settling back down. And there we go. Nice. Okay, this is the audio person they're going to show. That's the audio. Cameraman. Still trying to. S That's the director, the uh, assistant director. This is the one that's told him code gun. Now, this is the one that OSHA decided that was at fault because their supervisors over that uh, rooster or whatever you call it, you know, whatever I call it, a skunk. This is the skunk here. Yeah, she may look attractive here, but in reality, tattoos everywhere, purple hair, purple, I mean, not my flavor. You guys may find it my flavor, your flavor, but no. She's very unprofessional, but they were very unprofessional on the set. They, she didn't stop many a misfire that happened. Everybody said that they should be, she should have been fired. She is ultimately responsible for that bullet being in the gun, but OSHA said that ultimately the, the, uh, the partnership is, the corporation, and also that assistant director, all supervisors, that she was an employee, so therefore she can't be held responsible per OSHA standards. Um, I want to know if I can get you, no, it's only one playlist. The autopsy lady. All right, so he's the other one that got shot, and these people are still trying to worry about their jobs, so they can all go fuck themselves as far as I'm concerned. 
I now see the the real video, which I've been waiting forever to, for it to appear. That's their professional saying he did some wrong stuff there. Well, he did sweeping the gun is always is always wrong. This is the one that bit the bullet and they couldn't stabilize her. So why couldn't they stabilize this? The shooter, I mean, this is the one that loaded the gun, the uh, the uh, skunk with the multiple hair colors to your left. Now they couldn't stabilize it. They were never going to be a stabilizer. And if that's the case, they said they couldn't transport until they stabilized. How the fuck did she get stabilized an hour and a half later? Yet they were pumping air, oxygen down into her stomach. It would have. She would have gone more south, more, more worse than not. I think the hospital said something like, "Ah, you know, the, the the you know, she died pretty much on the helicopter in." Yeah, she was never stabilized. So, this is that uh, AD. Um, it's her fault. Let me get it clear to you guys. She was in charge of those weapons. She handed over a gun with a live bullet in it. I don't give a fuck how the live bullet got in there, which where it came from, the source. That's all nice and beautiful. You hand me a. It's a, she's she's responsible to make sure she's the armorer, which is unlicensed, as I told you. Um, they should have had that gun. Um, um, there's mom, if you will. That's the one. If you go track it down, they should have had that gun made 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 safe. There she is. There she was panicking. You know, remember this this drug issue they had there. She is there a day of. Uh, you know, looking like that. Is that you know? I'm sorry, guys. That's not professional to me. Um, this one is is the. Um, We'll get to that. Let's get to that right now. <laughs> what do you need to do, Thomas? Uh, as soon as you guys are three minutes away, I'll do my final wire. And we'll go. All right, so the, a couple of crew members walked off because there were a couple of misfires, and what's her name? Helena Hutchinson didn't address it, and they shouldn't have been that way. Even the assistant... So the gun armory lady was trying to get her job, you know, step up that game too, you know, a little nepotism thing. She wound up saying, oh, the gun went off. It just went off. They don't go off, right? You, you got to pull the triggers, all right? You got to pull the triggers and they hit the primer to go off. Well, she shot herself in the foot with a blank, with a, uh, with a, a blank, a, a bullet with a quarter round or a quarter powder in it with no head. All right, you just... What we're talking shoot. about now, when you just generally aim a weapon, cheat it to the side a little bit. But in this particular case, we're firing the blank. You would want to have four feet off camera aim. You can listen to him all you want. He's, he's not an expert because neither none of them are expert because none of them talk about how they dry fire these guns, testing each specific gun to determine, like on a on a white screen on a big giant white sheet, what the safety range, what the quarter round is. I saw no expert ever state that that's how they verify the gun's um, ability. Also, um, th she should have insisted that since we're doing this, uh, but there was no round, supposed to be not even a quarter round shot in there, not even a quarter round blank or half round. They didn't, they, it was no, no shield was required to protect them from the powder. Um, that shield they use would not stop this bullet, incidentally. All right, all right, there's a shooting. So look, he's shooting off. He did right. So look, he shot away from the camera, if you notice. Let's go back. He shoots there. All his powder goes that way. Look, it goes that way, off into the air. He, that's good discipline on firing that gun as far as making sure no one gets hurt. And now here comes the next one. It's, back, it's one up in the air. There's that one over there. What is he doing? Blowing past the cam cameraman's in front of him. It blows there. We can see which way it went, so that's that's pretty good. Now watch the discipline here. Instead of uh, drawing, the, after he shoots that guy, he doesn't sweep the cameraman, in this case, coming with the gun, across the cameraman to shoot the guy to the right. He lets the gun go up in the air. He goes over the cameraman. Look. Over the cameraman, past the cameraman, and not yet, not yet, not yet, not yet. The cameraman's still safe. And now he shoots. Look at it. So that you trying to, I know, I remember I said I'm the most best judge there ever is because no matter what I don't like, if I don't like the person, I'm still going to be fair. That's, that's, both of those shots are, are it's good, good, good discipline for this, for the blanks even. So you guys, you know, you can review this video. I know we wanted, we, a lot of us don't like the Baldwin, right? He hated Orange Man, but 
be fair. Well, you got to be fair. You're no different than the judge in New York that says, I just want Trump. And all these other people say, I just want this person. I want them. I'm not like that. I, you know, I may want my pound of flesh from Baldwin, but not in this case. So Alec Baldwin gets 100% pass on me. And you guys are going to hate this video. Love you. Thanks for the support for the video. I mean, the uh, cats. And uh, um, I got a lot more content coming for the uh, images, maybe tomorrow even for the... Uh, the uh, collapse, hangar collapse. Take care. I could I could go down this road and lot, give you a lot more evidence for you, including that lie about the uh, about her at the hour and a half, and that and that the both 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 of them gave her bad airway. So would the gunshot have resulted in her death? It should not have. She should have made it to the hospital. In my opinion, she should have been recovered and maybe been paralyzed in one leg, if not two, by the time they removed the bullet. But they never, they never gave her emergency care. She needed, she should, the family should sue the hospital, not, not just Baldwin. Take care, in my opinion.